Hello and welcome to the Crager Frights, the channel where we talk about movies and games, especially those dealing with the sci-fi action and horror genres. If that's something that might interest you, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more content like this in the future. Today I'm going to be giving my thoughts on the Netflix horror anthology series Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. The show has a lot in common with other similar series such as Tales from the Crypt, Twilight Zone, or perhaps an even greater comparison would be another Rod Serling series, Night Gallery, which aired from 1970 to 1973. In that series, the host would introduce various macabre tales using the concept of an art gallery as a literal framing device. In the case of the Netflix series, Del Toro begins each episode with a brief description of the theme of each story using the titular cabinet as a means of introducing each segment before closing his introduction by giving the title and director's name. In this case, there are eight episodes, typically around an hour long each, that were initially released in pairs over the course of four days. I am personally a pretty big fan of the works of Guillermo del Toro, as well as H.P. Lovecraft, whose stories form the basis for a number of the segments in this series, with two being direct adaptations and others being inspired by similar themes. For this review, I will order each episode by my own personal ranking from worst to best, and plan to give a brief synopsis of each and some overall thoughts about the series as a whole. So let's get started. Number 8, The Outside, directed by Anna Lily Amapur whose debut film, A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, she described as the first Iranian vampire spaghetti western. So I'll definitely have to check that one out. It's the fourth episode and an adaptation of a webcomic by Emily Carroll. The Outside stars Kate Micucci as Stacy, an awkward woman who is extremely self-conscious about her appearance and whose shy behavior and unusual taxidermy hobby make her an outcast at her workplace. Despite constant encouragement from her loving but often oblivious husband, played by Martin Starr, Stacy longs for the approval of her colleagues. During a Christmas party, she's introduced to a wonder skincare product called Aloe Glow. Although she's obviously allergic to it, she becomes convinced that with enough treatments, she will become beautiful. It doesn't take long before the desire becomes an unhealthy obsession that causes her life to spiral completely out of control. Although this episode was my least favorite of the eight, it wasn't completely without its merits and was probably the most Twilight Zone-esque of the stories in the Cabinet of Curiosities. I just didn't find the story that compelling overall, which is primarily a critique of consumerism and one's own self-image, which actually reminded me a lot of an episode of Doctor Who, in which people desperate to lose weight took a mysterious weight loss product that caused them to combust into creatures made of fat called adipose. To me, this episode is more of an adult take on the same sort of themes. Number seven, The Viewing, directed by the gloriously named Panos Cosmatos, director of the Nicolas Cage masterpiece Mandy. Number seven, The Viewing, is set in 1979 and is about four creative minds in various fields who are mysteriously brought together at an estate of a wealthy eccentric recluse played by Robocop himself, Peter Weller. Much of the episode is spent slowly building the reason why these four people were brought together, as well as giving us some insanely trippy visuals in typical Cosmato style. Eventually, we learn the reason for their meeting, and then the pace quickens considerably until its conclusion. This one was my seventh pick due to the incredibly long time it took to get going, with seemingly the first 40 minutes being spent giving people backstories and a sequence of passing around various drugs that seemed to go on forever. Once it got to the point, it got much better, but by that point, the episode was nearly over. Number six, The Graveyard Rats, directed by Vincenzo Natali, who had worked on such films as Cube, Cypher, and Splice, and based on a short story by Henry Kuttner, a friend of H.P. Lovecraft, who contributed greatly to the overall Cthulhu mythos. This was the second episode in the series, from this point on, the ranking of these episodes is much more difficult for me as I like the rest almost evenly. The Graveyard Rats stars David Hewlett as Mason, or Masson, a grave robber and con man whose financial situation drives him to desperation as he becomes convinced that rats in the cemetery are taking the corpses before he gets an opportunity to loot them for himself. After following a body being dragged through a tunnel by rats, he later encounters an enormous rat far more sinister. As an avid fan of movie monsters, the creature effects on the giant rat were a fun addition. 
this episode was also much more comical than the other entries, which was a bit surprising given the tone of the rest of the series. I also enjoyed the historical setting. In fact, all the episodes in the series seem to take place between the late 19th and 20th centuries, with about half of being set in the first three decades of the 1900s, which I appreciate as someone interested in history as well as horror. I fully understand the desire some filmmakers have to update and modernize the stories of Lovecraft and others, but I also personally prefer it when they're set in the period in which they were originally written. Number five, Dreams in the Witch House, directed by Catherine Hardwick, whose previous works include 13 and the first Twilight film. This was the sixth episode in Cabinet of Curiosities. Dreams in the Witch House is an adaptation of the H.P. Lovecraft story of the same name, starring Ron Weasley actor Rupert Grint, Walter Gilman, a man obsessed with trying to save his long-lost sister and believes he can do so by using a form of astral projection from an old house he believes has a special connection to the spirit realm to try to bring her back from a place known as the Forest of Lost Souls. However, doing this attracts the spirit of the previous inhabitant, a witch named Keziah, and her human-faced rat familiar Jenkins Brown. While both this and Pickman's model take certain liberties with the source material, they were both enjoyable adaptations in my opinion, and I also appreciate that the filmmaker's decision to show off the man-faced rat creature regardless of how obviously ridiculous the concept might be. The twist ending was also pretty interesting. Number four, The Autopsy, directed by Empty Man director David Pryor and based on a short story by Michael Shea, adapted for TV by David S. Goyer. This was the third episode in Cabinet of Curiosities. The Autopsy stars F. Murray Abraham as Dr. Carl Winters, who is asked by his sheriff friend to perform an autopsy on several minors who have recently died under mysterious circumstances investigation he stumbles upon a shocking discovery involving a parasitic extraterrestrial being this episode had compelling characters and was very well acted as well as featuring an interesting twist ending just a slight warning for anyone that might be on the squeamish side is this episode was especially graphic towards the end but this series is definitely rated tvma for a reason number three lot 36 directed by frequent del toro collaborator guillermo navarro based on a short story by Guillermo del Toro, adapted for television by Regina Corrado. Episode in the Cabinet of Curiosity series, Lot 36 tells the story of a xenophobic U.S. military veteran named Nick who purchases abandoned storage lots to sell the contents for profit and due to financial obligations is forced into a dangerous situation and needs money quickly to pay his debts. He wins a new lot that was previously owned by an elderly man who turned out to be a Nazi who dabbled in occultist practices. While Nick is clearing out the storage unit, he discovers an old seance board, which he takes to an antique store owner for appraisal, where he discovers three ancient books full of incantations, which piques the interest of the shop owner, who then calls in an expert in the occult, who goes along with Nick to the storage unit to find the missing fourth book and stumbles across the horror of cosmic proportions. While not an adaptation of a Lovecraft story, the themes of this episode are strongly Lovecraftian, and especially towards the end, it definitely goes into the territory of cosmic horror. Number two, Pickman's Model. Directed by The Vigil and 2022's Firestarter remake, Keith Thomas, and adapted for TV from the original H.P. Lovecraft story by Lee Patterson. Pickman's Model is the fifth episode of the Cabinet of Curiosities and stars Ben Barnes as Will Thurber, an aspiring artist at Miskatonic University who befriends the awkward but highly skilled Richard Pickman, brilliantly portrayed by Courageous Fright's Hall of Fame legend Crispin Glover. Unfortunately for Thurber, Pickman's eccentricities appear to be much more than mere personality quirks, as he soon discovers that his paintings have a horrifying effect on the psyche of those who gaze upon them. And while believing to be nothing more than the works of a man with an overactive imagination, Thurber later discovers inspiration for Mr. Pickman's works. A relatively accurate adaptation of Lovecraft's 1927 short story, but with some embellishments from Patterson, especially towards the end where we get a particularly gruesome twist. I felt this was a pretty solid take on a Lovecraft story, again, setting in the proper period with some stellar performances from the leads, especially Crispin Glover's titular character. Number one, The Murmuring, directed and adapted for television by Jennifer Kent, based on a short story by Guillermo del Toro. 
The final episode of Cabinet of Curiosities focused on two ornithologists, Nancy and Edgar Bradley, portrayed by the Babadooks Essie Davis and The Walking Dead's Andrew Lincoln, respectively, whose work studying birds take them to an abandoned house on a remote the couple, whose relationship is strained due to the recent traumatic death of their daughter, soon find themselves embroiled with the haunting of the house that they're staying at. And when Nancy starts hearing and seeing ghosts and later discovers that the previous occupants met a grisly fate. The story is a slow burn, but a satisfying one, in my opinion, which tackles the topics of coping with grief and the strain it can put on a relationship. The lead actress, Essie Davis, who portrayed the mother in Jennifer Kent's debut film, The Babadook, is fantastic in this episode. The overall feel of the episode is drastically different from the others, as this is more of a straightforward ghost story than a cosmic horror creature feature that comprised the plots of many of the other episodes, and might best be compared to one of Mike Flanagan's Netflix series such as Haunting of Hill House or Bly Manor, if the entire series was compressed to a single episode but it's done very well and doesn't feel rushed at all well that's my own personal ranking of each episode if you watch Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities let me know in the comments below what episode was your favorite and why personally I enjoyed this show a lot especially compared with the other popular series I've been watching lately and would rate the show overall as an 8 or even 9 out of 10 Definitely a high recommendation from me, especially if you're a fan of gothic or Lovecraftian cosmic horror and Del Toro's previous works. With that, I thank you for watching this review and hope you have a fantastic day. Take care and hope to see you on another video here at the Courage of Frights. See ya.